world-renowned Sun City Resort in the Pilonsberg is one of South Africa's best-known tourist attractions. South Africans and international visitors flock to an impressive complex carved out of the African bush, with Sun City offering visitors a world of entertainment. For the off-road racing fraternity, a visit to the Pilonsberg means it's time once again for the Sun City 400, a race that is traditionally one of the toughest on the APSA off-road championship calendar. Facilities at Sun City are as good as you'll find anywhere in the world, with race headquarters and the pit area an impressive sight from the air. Back on terra firma, there was a carnival atmosphere mixed with the underlying tension that is always present before the start of a race. Two factors added to pre-race tension at this year's event. First, competitors were going to be faced with a completely new route. And secondly, tight championship situations, particularly in the production vehicle category, added spice to what was round five of the ABSA off-road championship. After winning the Toyota 1000 Desert Race in Botswana, reigning South African champions Chris Fisser and Yapi Bardner were only half a point behind championship leaders Mike Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson with the Team Ford crew full of confidence. Yeah, it's quite tough. Eh? I think it's about 21 SPs in the field, so it's going to be competition with his but I think we've got a good chance to do well because the car's good and the team is good and I think we're feeling good. Included in a record field of 21 cars in the Premier SP class were Paki Labuskagni and Rekas Erasmus, who were making their SP debut. Would they return to Class E, though? Yeah, yeah, I can do full, full year of and I've seen my eye down there. I've always been in the SP Wobbies, and now I'm here, so I can do my best to do also back in harness in the SP class after a lengthy layoff from racing with a husband and wife team of Ramon and Maret beside notes. Um, op die stadium is het net een once op, so ons sal kyk hoe verloop met die races en dan sal ons nou maar kyk met Carnival City en so aan of ons al verder rijdt. Making their Sun City debut were teenagers Jason Fenter and Vincent van Allerman. Jason is the son of Class D champion Dion Fenter, with the youngsters having only their second national outing. We just had to finish the race and get some points and that's all. You're going to end up with more points than your arm, Probably, yes. <laughs> and it'll be funny if I beat my dad, but that's, we just yet to have some fun. Production vehicle leaders Mike Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson arrived at Sun City with a lead that was tenuous, to say the least. Yes, after four rounds of the, the, the series, it's good to be a half point in the lead. I was hoping to consolidate that at the desert, but uh, we had a lot of prop shop mechanical problems. Got to the end, but uh, it would have been, uh, I would have been more comfortable had I had a bigger lead. But it's still a nice position to be in at this stage of the race. It was tough at the top with only eight points separating six crews at the head of the production vehicle overall championship standings. The banter that goes with the draw for start positions on the Donaldson Prologue was again much in evidence with a roar of delight when Anthony Taylor drew first place on the road. The Donaldson Prologue determines grid positions for the race and the top five seeds go into the hat. Seedings are based on performances on previous prologues and can change from race to race. On the Sun City 400, the 60-kilometer Donaldson Prologue was run in the Bakubang area to the west of the Sun City complex. Bakubang means hippo in English, but in late July, competitors were unlikely to find much water along the route. The weekend was to produce plenty of drama and a few surprises, with the Atlas Cop County of the Hilux pair of Gary Bertolt and Andre Vermeulen scoring their first Donaldson Prologue win of the season by the narrowest of margins. Bertolt and Vermeulen finished just one second ahead of the factory team Castor Toyota Hilux of former South African champion Duncan Foss and Rob Howie. The pair won the Atlas Copco 400 in KwaZulu-Natal and were looking for their second win of the 2011 campaign. Third place went to Rustenburg-based Willem and Dana Foss in another Tiazza Hilux, with the father and son pair making full use of a little local knowledge. Conditions also suited another father and son pair in Hichu and Yaup de Brain, and behind them Ramon and Maret Besaidnot were not showing signs of ring rust after their lengthy layoff from off-road racing. 
There were also no signs of ring rust from Peki Labaskahli and Rikas Erasmus, who made sure that the first six on the prologue were all Toyota Halax entries. Reigning production vehicle champions Chris Fisser and Yapi Badenhorst were the first non-Toyota entry in seventh place in the factory team Ford Ranger TDCI. The pair were hampered by power steering problems, while behind them, veterans Hannes Hobler and Henny Tristiecher lost time with a wrong slot and an encounter with the tree that left the RFS BMW X3 with a broken windscreen. After a win on the first event of the season, the pair had run into lean times and were looking for a return to form. There was a top 10 finish for Terence Marsh, who won the Sun City 400 last year with Bucks Carolyn. Marsh is this year partnered by George Smallberger with the Regent Racing Nissan Navarra pair edging in ahead of class D leaders Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. Only 20 seconds behind Fenter and Palmer were Louis Weichelt and Francis Bushma in the nicely turned out N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser. Charging along behind the landy were teenagers Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable in the second factory Ford Ranger. Not far behind the Peter Maritzburg pair were championship contenders Thomas Rundle and Joan Moore in the Baden Tire Services Nissan Navara, who lost time early on via puncture. After a disappointing Toyota 1000 desert race uppermost in the minds of the Baden pair was to bounce back with a solid performance and bag some points at least. Also back in action after a short layoff were Mpumalanga brothers Johan and Werner Horn in the Malilan Toyota Land Cruiser. A steady run took them to third in Class D with a similar performance taking Gerald LaRue and Willem Pretorius into first place in Class E. The Blomfontein-based Rubicon Ford pair came in ahead of the 4x4 Mega World Toyota of Jason Fenter and Vincent van Allerman. It was another impressive showing from the rookie teenagers, with the youngsters holding off championship leaders Pitkotza and Salomon Victor in another Toyota Hilux. Back at race headquarters, technical crews were hard at work and the amount of damage inflicted on vehicles during the Donaldson prologue would determine whether it was going to be an early or late night. For drivers and co-drivers, it was either all smiles or doom and gloom. Yeah, I've got to be really happy. Eh? The, uh, the ball bounced in our direction. I think we've got a tight margin on the Toyota, but this, at this Copco Hilux definitely kept me out front there, which was a nice thing for a change. I think we needed a bit of luck to go our way. Yeah, it was a very, very tight prologue. I mean, um, sometimes it's first, second, first, second for a lot of kilometers, but nice uh, new route, very good mark. Um, we enjoyed it. We're very happy for a good result. It's about time. Very, very dusty out there. It's very, very tight, and the lurkers is just next to the road, tree stumps, everything. You had to drive with your head, you know, and maybe we took it a little bit easy today, but still, I think our car is in one piece. Uh, we lost a windscreen with a branch that was hanging over the road, uh, but we're happy. Um, I think the guy that's tomorrow going to drive with his head and his heart, maybe, he's going to win. Stunning. The car's fine. Uh, it went all very well. Um, it's, uh, the race is nearly in the time trials. It's always in the race tomorrow. So, yeah, starting well. 15th overall, uh, second in class, 20 seconds behind uh, D1, so yeah, we placed correctly, so yeah, I think it's going to be nice. The Regent Racing Team, headed up by businessman Terence Marsh, was the bearer of good news at Sun City. The two X-Factory Nissan Navarros, campaigned by Marsh and Mike Whitehouse, are up for sale. And with substantial backing from Imperial Automotive Retail, the Navarros are to be replaced next season by two new models. Yeah, we're very pleased to be able to say to everybody that we are, as Imperial Nissan, getting involved with developing two new cars for next year's racing season. Um, we're coming to the party from a sponsorship point of view and joining with the Regent Racing Team. We have a long history going back probably about 12 years now where we've been involved with support vehicles and assisting with some of the heavy commercial transport to the various races over the years. And we've taken the final plunge now to actually design two new vehicles with Terence and his team and the Regent Racing Team next year. So we're quite excited about it. It's a new challenge and something to look forward to.
The Toyota 1000 Desert Race in June cleared a logjam at the top of the Special Vehicle Championship battle with two Solwalt crews in a strong position at the halfway mark of the season. The Sun City 400 would be important for the Solwalts and those doing the chasing, with the race also seeing a return to action of old stalwart Nardis Alberts in the wraps at bat. Alberts and Sun Louis were making their first appearance of the season and looking to compete in the remaining races on the ABSA series calendar. Yes, I, I, I intend to do. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't, I haven't got a good story, but I didn't do the first four races, but uh, we were here for the week uh, and I thought I'm going to do Sunset in slows by. So yeah, I intend to do that as well. The palaboa based team of Cully and Quinton Sulwalt won last year's Sun City 400 in the elegant field bat and were sitting pretty at the top of this year's championship. Uh, halfway through the season, so I mean, it's, uh, you can't say it's over yet, so uh, we're just going to push on and see where we get. We're going to go for the win again, obviously. Um, but yeah, lo uh, looking forward to, to, to Sun City, a new route, new challenge, so really looking forward to a good race. Class B championship contenders Keith and Andrew Mahanete were looking to end a run of three non-finishes with driver Keith expecting the new route to provide a major challenge. It appears so. Well, it has to be. Uh, it looks fast, the top section. Uh, I don't quite like uh, very, very fast sections. The bottom section is fine. Do you, do you prefer the more technical route? Yeah, for sure. The very first stuff, because of our power, we don't really get going nicely. But the technical route, we can stay with all the other cars. Three Class P teams featured in the top ten of a special vehicle championship dominated by the two Sulwald crews with Evan Hutchison and Danny Stassen, the main danger. The top five seeds in the special vehicle category also draw for start positions on the Donaldson Prologue that determines the race starting grid. As is the case with circuit racing, a good grid placing is an important ingredient for success. And fresh from a win on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, leading the championship, there was perhaps a touch of deja vu when Cully and Quinton Silva drew number one on the road. The race weekend was to throw up a number of surprises as well, and rookie driver Richard Fuller and the experienced Jeff Minnett provided a portent of things to come when they won the prologue in the Atlas Copco bat running in Class P. There was another surprise when the Cezanani Plastics Porter of Brett Parker and VZ Van Sale are paced more fancy crews to take second place and lead the Class A Brigade. A career best performance from brothers David and Gary White took them to third overall in the Rubicon Bat, with the pair delighted with their first podium on a Donaldson Prologue. The first of the more fancied crews were former Class B champions Johan van Staden and James Rousseau, who now campaign in Class A in a bat spec 5 running in Atlas Copco colours. The Pretoria crew went to Sun City with a mix of two podiums and two non-finishes and needed a good result to take their championship challenge to another level. The Atlas Copco bat was being chased by Herman and Wichard Sulwalt in the Sulwalt Racing SVR, who later described their performance as the best they'd managed on a prologue so far this season. Another surprise saw former motorcycle star Graham McLaughlin and brother Vivian finish six in the Conix Koila Yafofa in only their second outing. In a different guise, the Conix won South African championships in the hands of Franz Chepak Jr. and Senior. Right behind the McLaughlins were Bula Bootis and Johan Pretorius, with only 12 seconds separating the Sulwats, the McLaughlins and the Bootis Pretorius bat. Next up were Nick and Ryan Harper in the motorite bat, who took a rather cautious approach in the long grass. A bout of motion sickness made life difficult for Marius Ferri and his wife Yolinda as they finished more than three minutes behind Class P leaders Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett. There was more than a minute between the Ferris and Class P championship leaders Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson in the region racing Jimco, with Class B leaders Kutsia and Sandra Labaskahni battling with a persistent misfire that played the race on Exarco. Technicians who work on the special vehicles face the same problems as their production vehicle counterparts. An early or late night depends on the size of the problem. While the mechanics went to work, former kart racer Richard Fuller reflected on how being leader of the pack was a new experience in this form of racing. I've been the novice that I am, as everybody says, it's still uh, new. Eh? We'll see how it goes tomorrow. It's the first time I've been right up there in front of the frames. I think just uh, drive our own race. Uh, we're not racing anybody in front of us. They're all SPs. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow. That's it. Yeah, we had a great run today. It's uh, been a long time coming. 
So yes, we had a, a fantastic clean run, a little bit of dust, but nice and, nice, and, nice and fast in sections and really enjoyed it. It was great. Yes, we battled all, all year long and um, if we came together today, the, we enjoyed the route finally. Uh, I think a bit of disadvantage of the guys went up in front of us, um, but that's how it goes. That's racing and we had a good run, clean run, and we really enjoyed it tremendously. This August, on your World of Champions, the Sea Robbers begin their ABSA Premiership title defence. The Fox face the toughest nations in world rugby. And another explosive season of Barclays Premier League gets underway. This August, the ABSA Premiership, Castle Tri-Nations, Barclays Premier League, the PGA Championship, IWF World Championships and the Bundesliga. In September, the race for pole position heats up in Formula One. African football flair is on display in French League One. And eight million is up for grabs in Africa's most lucrative cup competition. In September, Formula One, French League One and the MTN8. In October, history beckons with the world champion Springboks. It's the business end of SA's oldest rugby competition. And the Proteus get their first run under golden boy Gary Kirsten. In October, the IRB Rugby World Cup Final, Absa Curry Cup and SA versus Australia. Live on Supersport. Guys, start your engines. You're going to need maximum downforce. No flat spots. And hit the brakes hard. If there's a gap, take it. When the red light goes on, the show begins. Join Sasha Martinengo and his crew of experts as they take the wheel and drive you through the incredible world of Formula One. Absolute, Absolute F1. F1. Every Wednesday night before race weekend. Only on your world of champions. Brought to you by Mobile One. Available at Engine Nationwide. The Pilansberg at the end of July is not the warmest region in South Africa and a bitterly cold morning greeted teams, race officials and off-road enthusiasts on race day. If Donaldson prologue results and the number of surprises dished up were anything to go by, an interesting day lay ahead. With just one second separating two Toyota entries at the front of the field, there was going to be action from the start. Yeah, look, we start a second behind uh, Gary and other Toyota, so um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, we had a good run yesterday and i um, hoping we can have a good day today. Despite the early morning chill in the air, there was a large turnout of enthusiasts as the cars lined up for what would be a ceremonial start at race headquarters. From that start, cars would travel a short distance from the Sun City complex to where the race would officially get underway. Off-road racing is a family-orientated sport and does not stand much on ceremony, with Race HQ, the pits and designated service point all open to the general public. Enthusiasts are encouraged to mingle and chat with teams and crews and the atmosphere before races is always relaxed and very friendly. Race director Audrey Roots flagged the field away at the ceremonial start with cars leaving as per the times they set up during the Donaldson prologue. Gone are the days when cars started at two minute intervals known as dust gaps. Races are these days run to real time, which makes it all the more important to set up a good time in the prologue. The switch to starting according to prologue times also provides for plenty of action throughout the field right from the start of a race. The race was to be run over two loops of 180 kilometers each with a compulsory 15-minute stop at the designated service point or DSP after the first loop. The first 60 kilometers of each circle followed the prologue route before skirting a range of copies in the Mahobi's Kral area. There was an equally good turnout of spectators at the start proper of the race and when the flag dropped, Duncan Force and Rob Howie lost no time in surging ahead of the Atlas Copco Toyota Hilux of Prologue winners Gary Berthold and Andre Vermeulen. The factory car's V8 motor had a little more grunt than the six-cylinder Atlas Copco Toyota and there was nothing Berthold and Vermeulen could do as the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux disappeared down the road at a rapid rate of knots. With an open track ahead of them and no dust to slow them down, Force and Howie were sitting in the pound seats. 
There were early indications that dust would be a major problem for crews, but there was no inkling that the race would be a short-lived affair for Gary Berthold and Andre Vermeulen. Willem and Dana Foss started only 36 seconds behind the two cars ahead of them, but quickly went past the Atlas Copco Toyota, which was standing on the side of the road. The Fossi Toyota Hilux was hot on the heels of the leaders and was already showing some early battle scars. The early demise of the Atlas Copco Toyota lifted the Mikuren XL Hilux of Hicho and Jacques de Brain into third place, with the father and son pair running 26 seconds behind the leaders. The de Brains were being chased by Raban and Marette Besedenote, who had the Rubicon Toyota Hilux of Pekki Lambuskachni and Rikas Erasmus breathing down their necks. The first of the non-Toyota entries was the diesel-powered Ford Ranger of reigning champions Chris Visser and Yapi Badenhorst, with the pair around 40 seconds adrift of the leaders. The Atlas Copco bat of Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett was still at the front of the special vehicle field, with the pair losing a few seconds with a minor overshoot. No harm done, and they were soon underway again. Multiple champion Hannes Robler and Hini Tersteeg had made a steady, if unspectacular, start to the race in the diesel-powered RFS BMW. This was in sharp contrast to Gary Bertolt and Andre Vermeulen, who were still trying to work out what had gone wrong. We don't know. Um, it sounds like, almost like a, a throttle position sensor that's gone faulty. But we're also thinking there might be water in the fuel because we pulled in from the garage this morning. We're not sure. We don't know. It just doesn't go at all. If you put throttle down, the car just dies. We don't know. The Cisanani Plastics Porter of Brett Parker and Vizant van Sail was running second in the special vehicle category and at the front of the Class A field. For the second race in a row, van Sail was deputizing for Steve Parker and trying to close down the Porter were David and Gary White in the Rubicon bat. Visibility was now a problem up and down the field with Terence Marsh and George Smallberger battling along in the White's dust in the Regent Racing Nissa Navara. The Atlas Copco bat of Johan van Staden and James Rousseau picked up a place on the road when they went past class D leaders Dion Fent and Ian Palmer in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. There were some enthusiastic spectators along the route waving on the likes of Louis Weichelt and Francis Bouchma who were only 18 seconds behind Fenter and Palmer. A good battle was developing between the Weichelt Bouchma Toyota Land Cruiser and Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable in the second Team Ford Ranger. Also going along steadily were Thomas Rundle and Joan Moore with the Baden Tire Services Nissan Navara pair intent on a solid finish and important championship points. Hot on their heels were Hermann and Wichard Silvalt in the Solvalt Racing SVR and the McLaughlin brothers in the aging but still competitive Conics. The McLaughlins were at the head of a little train of cars that included the Harpers and the Motorite Bat and the PHB Bat of Marius and Yolinda Ferri, who were four minutes behind the race leaders. Towards the back of the field, Diedrich Hutting and Christo Bosman had taken early control of Class E in the Transcor Toyota Hilux, with the father and daughter combination of Kutsia and Sandra Labaskachny running at the front of Class B in the race on Exarco. The completely new route for this year's Sun City 400 was turning into a tough test for teams and machinery. North of Sun City, the first loop cut away back towards Mohobi's Kral after swinging around and heading for Mahope and Vidranki. At the front of the field, the race had taken an interesting twist. Willem and Dana Force were right on the heels of race leaders Duncan Force and Rob Howie in the Team Castrol Toyota Hilux. The terrain through which the route was running had changed and Force and Howie decided that tactically it would be a good plan to let another crew take on the role of Pathfinder. The factory Toyota team politely moved aside to let the Rustenburg-based father and son team take the lead for the first time in an ABSA national championship event. The forces had built up a good head of steam and were taking full advantage of local knowledge. The pair had been among the front runners on the Donaldson Prologue and during the early part of the race, and at this stage, they were on top of the world. The forces' time at the front of a national championship off-road race didn't last too long, though. When Duncan Foss and Rob Howie decided enough was enough and that the route held no terrors, the factory cast Toyota Hilux team put the hammer down and quickly caught the forces' Toyota Hilux. 
After winning the Atlas Copco 400 in KwaZulu-Natal, Fasenhawi went to the Toyota 1000 Desert Race with high hopes. A persistent fuel pressure problem blew them out of the water in Botswana in what was a major disappointment for the factory Toyota crew and yet another Sun City twist, a puncture, forced a halt to their progress. With Duncan Force and Rob Howie temporarily sidelined, local pair Willem and Dana Force found themselves back in the lead in the production vehicle category. But in a race that was starting to produce intriguing twists and turns, it was a tenuous advantage. Steaming along behind the forces were another father and son team in Hicho and Jacques de Brain in the Mikaren XL Toyota Hilux, with Ramon and Marek Besedenot having fallen by the wayside in the Puertas for Food Toyota Hilux. Reigning champions Chris Fisser and Yapi Badenost were up into third place in the Team Ford Ranger TDCI. Right on their heels were Piki Labuskachny and Rikas Erasmus, who were relishing their first outing in an SP-class vehicle. Behind the Rubicon Toyota Hilux, there had also been a change in the special vehicle pecking order, with Brett Parker and VZ Van Zale now leading in the Cisanani Plastics Porter. Theirs was also a tenuous lead, with Prologue winners and Class P leaders Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett right on the heels of Parker and Van Zale. For the second time in quick succession, tenure at the front of the field for Willem and Dana Foss was short-lived. It did not take long for Hecho and Jaap de Brain to catch the Fossi's Toyota and zip into the production vehicle lead. The next crew to go past were Chris Fisser and Jaapie Bardnost, who are now second after starting the day down in seventh. They left a calling card and in the space of a few minutes, Willem and Dana Foss had gone from first to third. Going along steadily in the RFS BMW X3 with the experienced Hannes Hobler and Hinita Stecher, who were quite content to bide their time on the first loop and keep an eye on what was happening in front of them. Hobler and Ter Stecher dropped a place when Duncan Foss and Rob Howie went past in a Team Castor Toyota Hilux, now restored to four fully inflated tyres. The pair picked up another place on the road when Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett did the gentlemanly thing and let the factory theater go past. Also going along steadily were brothers David and Gary White with the Rubicon back just 42 seconds behind special vehicle leaders Brett Parker and VZ Van Sale. The White brothers were lying third overall among the specials and second in Class A behind Parker and Van Sale. Chasing after the Whites were Johan van Staden and James Rousseau in the Atlas Copco Bat, with the pair handily placed at just over a minute behind the leaders. The Spec 5 Bat was sounding healthy, with the former Class P champions looking for their first Class A victory. Behind the Bat, Thomas Rundle and Joan Moore were looking for their first production vehicle victory, with the Baden Tire Services Miss Navarra under pressure from the SVR of Hermann and Richard Zumwalt. There was some hectic racing going on throughout the field. Action from helicopter footage saw the Maxi's tyre rack porter of Limpopo crew Naim Mosaji and Rayhan Bodhanya get ahead of the Regent Racing Nissan Navara of Terence Marsh and George Smallberger. Next to go past the Nissan Navara were Bula Buertas and Johan Pretorius in the Buertas for Food Bat. What happened next could have been a scene out of the Keystone Cops or it could have been Piccadilly Circus at rush hour. that were on the right route and crews who had taken the wrong route were now backtracking and milling around. There were cars coming and going in every direction, with the dust adding to a situation fraught with danger. Included in the comings and goings were the Regent Racing Nissan Navara, the Baden Tire Services Nissan Navara, Louis Weichelt and Francis Buschma, and Century Racing Crew Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar. Masaji and Bahanya were also part of the mix, and in the dust and chaos, something had to give. The mayhem finally reached a climax when, in the midst of all the dust and the confusion, KwaZulu Natal pair Clint Gibson and Gary Campbell managed to deposit the Gibson Racing SVR on a tree stump. The 
final section of the first loop of the race took cruise towards Matuster and back to the start finish not far from the Sun City complex. On the run end to the designated service point, matters were tight at the front. Vicky Lovaskakni and Rikas Erasmus became the third crew to hit the front of the field when they went past the Mikro and Excel Toyota of Ejo and Jaap de Brain. Willem and Dana Foss had been moving about in the top three like a yo-yo and also went past the de Brains to move into second place. On their SP class debut in the Rubicon Racing Toyota Hilux, reigning classy champions Piki Labaskachny and Rikas Erasmus were now the unlikely leaders of the production vehicle category. Punctures and strain from the roots had also hit Brett Parker and VZ Van Sale and Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett, with the result that David and Gary White now find themselves leading the special vehicles. With cars leading the special and production vehicle categories, the Rubicon Racing Cup was overflowing. The cat and mouse game between the Debrains and the forces were continuing. The forces had again dropped behind the Debrains with both crews passing the Team Ford Ranger of Chris Fisser and Yapi Bardnost, which had retired after losing an altercation with a tree stump as well. Also in the mix were Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett, with the Atlas Copco bat appearing out of nowhere in the thick dust to be the meat in the Debrains versus forces sandwich. River crossings usually attract spectators like Pooh Bear to a honeypot. There wasn't much water on the Sun City 400, but dry river crossings also provide for good vantage points, with Hecho and Yop de Brain now running around two and a half minutes behind production vehicle leaders Pekilan Piskachny and Rikas Erasmus. Behind the leaders, there was an ominous sign with the Castrol Toyota Hilux of Duncan Force and Rob Howie into third place, with the factory crew starting to flex their muscles. Force and Howie were running just over two and a half minutes behind the leaders, but looked to have the capacity to close in on cars ahead whenever they felt like it. The Atlas Copco bat of Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett was still the proverbial country mile ahead in Class P, with a combination of a talented young driver and an experienced navigator working well together. Minnett has been around the block a time or two, and the Atlas Copco car had moved clear of Willem and Dana Foss, with the Fossi's Toyota Hilux starting to experience power steering problems. The Fosses were well placed in fourth, but had a suspect reliability record with four non-finishers going into the Sun City 400. There were no reliability problems for Harman and Richard Sulwald, and they had picked up a number of places on the road in the healthy-sounding Sulwald Racing SVR. Behind them, reigning South African champions Cully and Quinton Sulwald were on a mission. After a disappointing prologue that saw them start 32nd on the road and 14th in the special vehicle category, they had skied their way through the field in impressive fashion. By contrast, wily old veterans Hannes Hobler and Henny Terstierke had avoided heroics in the RFS BMW and a solid morning's work had lifted them into fifth place in the production vehicle category. The retirement of Ramon and Marek Besaidenhout, Gary Berthold and Andre Vermeulen and the Fisser Badenhorst Ford also helped their rise up the leaderboard. The drive of the morning belonged to Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin in the second Castrol Toyota Hilux, with an impressive performance also coming from Swaziland crew John Thompson and Clinton McNamara, who were lying second in Class P in the Zarco Magnum. With the Pilonsberg easily accessible from locations in Gauteng and Northwest Province, the Sun City 400 had drawn large crowds with fans enjoying the close racing. In Class D, the Louis Weichelt Francis Bushma N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser had moved ahead of Prologue winners Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. After three non finishers in a row, Fenter and Palmer, the reigning Class D champions, were desperate to finish in the points. A steady run had kept Diedrich Hutting and Christo Bosman at the head of the Class E field in the Transcore Toyota Hilux. The tight route was tough going for the four-cylinder two-wheel drive entries, but Hutting and Bosman had opened up a lead of just more than two minutes over teenagers Jason Fenter and Vincent van Allerman in the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. Although still plagued from time to time by the misfire that spoilt their Donaldson prologue, the father and daughter pair of Kutsia and Sandra Labaskachny had taken control of Class B in the Raisonic Zarko and had a comfortable cushion over Keith and Andrew Mahanete in another Zarko. 
Back at the designated service point, anxious service teams and family members waited for the cars to arrive from the flying finish a couple of kilometers down the road from race headquarters. There was a 15-minute compulsory stop for teams, which is not added to their race time. Any delay in leaving the pits after 15 minutes is added to race times, and there is frantic activity in the pits to get vehicles back into the race on time. It's very uh, tough in that virgin terrain in the, in the north and uh, very dusty, so we're battling with a few cars. If I can ask Tussle, about five of us passing and repassing, uh, it's challenging. Unfortunately, had a puncture this morning, so it put us back a little bit. But uh, we're all good in the DSP, no problems, so uh, we're all in for lap two. Yeah, it's going beautifully, it's going beautifully. Uh, we are lying second on the road uh, for the specials, first peak. Going very nice, we've lost a place out there, but it's hell of a dusty. It's really, really dusty. It's difficult when you get down a car, it's just, it's almost impossible to get past the dust. Yeah, it's quite tight. Uh, it's an excellent route. The route is a very good mark, and it's very, uh, uh, you can be caught out very easily. But um, otherwise, it's an excellent route. We enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going well. It's, it's very, very, very dusty out there. It's never a car, you catch a car when a car passes. You, you sit for a long time. And basically, you almost have to stop. Sometimes you just can't see anything. Um, and also about 30 k's from the end, our wipers jammed. So with water on the windscreen, so with the dust, it made a thick mud. And we, we were battling to see. But uh, yeah, it's going well. It's very, very rough out there. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's just tough. It's, the, the dust is bad. We can't, you can't pass anywhere. You know? We, we stuck behind about four cars, but uh, we're going to try again another time. Uh, it's going well. We're having a good run. Uh, very dusty, but it's a nice route. So, uh, yeah, we're doing well, so I'm just going to try and get to the finish now and just keep a constant pace. Yes, now, we, uh, we were the only guys that finished the prologue yesterday, so we started with a little bit of health indeed because the other guys had to take time and a half, our time and a half. Uh, we went out and had a very clean run till about 90 kilometers. And then uh, we picked up a misfire again. Uh, yesterday we changed spoils and we were looking for it, but we couldn't find it. But that slowed us down quite a bit. About two k's from the end, we ground to halt. And we thought, well, that was game over. We got out of the car, had a stroll around there, sat under the trees, got back, tried it again, and it fired up. And here we are. So uh, we'll see how it goes for the rest of the day. But we'll keep on till it's dead. which traditionally includes the hosts, consists of New Zealand, France, Canada, Japan and Tonga. The French are the third highest point scorers in Rugby World Cup history and are expected to advance to the second round. Canada has played in all Rugby World Cups since 1987 and advanced to the quarters in 1991. Japan suffered the biggest defeat ever in 1995 when they lost to a rampant New Zealand. Tonga's war dance, the Sippy Tau, is considered even more aggressive than the infamous Haka. New Zealand won the inaugural tournament back in 1987 and are favourites to win this year's tournament. Game on. A 24-hour dedicated rugby channel only on your world of champions. What makes us African? Is it being born to a continent where nature lives or belonging to a place all mankind can call home? Are we African because of our originality, our intriguing heritage, or the diversity that surrounds us? We are African because our hearts beat to the rhythm of the motherland, and no sound can make us prouder. Africa has made you and me. This is not a place we find ourselves. It's who we are. DSTV, so much more proudly African. Leading an ABSA off-road championship event was a new experience for Piki Lambeskachny and Rikus Erasmus in the Royal Continental Hilux, previously campaigned by Peter Ruthven. They were doing a good job in the special vehicle category, and the Rokon racing guys were also in the driving seat with brothers David and Gary White out in front in the Rokon bat. Leading a race overall was also a novelty for the White brothers.
We're airborne again with our helicopter picking up Hiko and Yacht de Brain, who are still running second among the production vehicles in the Mikuren XL Toyota Hilux. Early on in Loop 2, the de Brains were caught by the Castrol Toyota Hilux of Duncan Force, with the factory team having no problem in cruising past the father and son privateers to move into a menacing second overall in the production category. The way was now clear for Duncan Foss and Rob Howie to chase after production vehicle leaders Pucky Labaskachny and Rickus Erasmus, with a V8 Castrol Toyota Hilux having a clear performance advantage over the Rogue on Toyota Hilux. The job of getting to the front of the SP class was made easy for Duncan Foss and Rob Howie when the Rogue on Toyota Hilux of Pucky Labaskachny and Rickus Erasmus lost wads of time when an engine earth wire worked loose and the fuel pump stopped working. Foss and Howie had nothing to gain by getting involved in a race with the Rubicon bat of David and Gary White and were quite happy to let them go past and disappear into the distance. A little further back, Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett were still second in the special vehicle category and running at the head of Class P. Throughout the race, the Atlas Copco crew had settled on a steady pace and it opened up a huge gap over the next car in Class P. After a performance that had promised so much, it was the end of the road for Willem and Dana Foss. They coasted to a halt at a spectator point with the smoke from the Fossi's Toyota Hilux, signifying a blown engine, and another did not finish entry in the results column for the Rustenburg crew. With no such problems, it was plain sailing for Hermann and Richard Sulwart, who'd moved into third place overall in the Sulwart Racing SVR. While almost unnoticed, Hannes Schrober and Henny Tersteger had slipped into third place in the production vehicle category in their RFS BMW X3. The retirement of the Forces Toyota also moved Malcolm Koch and Johan Berger up a notch, with the Koch and Sons Toyota Hilux now into fourth place among the production vehicles, with Bulla Boetus and Johan Pretorius also quietly moving up the special vehicle ladder. The race was now entering a critical phase and retirements had also lifted Thomas Rundle and Joan Moore up the production vehicle list. They lost a place on the road to Evan Hutchison and Danny Stassen, but the demise of Hicho and Jacques de Brain moved production vehicle frontrunners up a notch. Rundle and Moore had built up a head of steam on an open stretch of road and they gained another place when they flew past the Regent Racing Nissan Navara in the hands of Terence Marsh and George Smallberger. After a rather disappointing Donaldson prologue and a quiet first loop, former South African champion Evan Hutchison and Donnie Stassen were also making up ground in the four-wheel drive motorright Revo. They were at the front of a little train of cars that included the Baden Tire Services Nissan Navara and the Marsh Smallberger Nissan, which was under pressure from KwaZulu-Natal crew Clint and Gary Campbell in their Gibson Racing Porter. Local youngsters were enjoying themselves and it didn't take long for Clint Gibson and Gary Campbell to catch Terence Marsh and George Smallberger. Once again, there was no point in the two cars getting involved in a race and Marsh and Smallberger were happy to see the Gibson Racing Porter move ahead of the region racing Navarra. The Gibson team were also responsible for an act of sportsmanship that kept Swaziland crew John Thompson and Clint McNamara in the race. The Swazi team were packing up after the prologue when Gibson lent them a spare clutch that enabled them to make it to the start of the race. They were running second in Class P and were being chased by Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar in the Century Racing CR4, which is earmarked for an appearance in the Dakar Rally. For some spectators, a quiet, out-of-the-way spot is the preferred way to watch off-road racing. The real enthusiasts wait for every car to go past, with Nahim Mosaji and Rayon Badhanya involved in a little cameo duel with Class B championship leaders Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson in the Regent Racing Jimco. The Regent team were around 11 minutes behind the Class P leaders, but had a minute to spare over Marius and Yulinda Ferri and the PHP Bat. Charging along behind the Ferris were reigning South African champions Cully and Quinton Silwalt in the elegant Fuel Bat. They were on the back foot following a Donaldson prologue that Silwalt Sr. described as their worst performance this season. It was a setback for the team who arrived at Sun City fresh from a win on the Toyota 1000 Desert Race and an increased majority at the top of the Special Vehicle Championship.
It was in the 90s that Kali and Hermann Sewald won the South African Championship before taking a lengthy sabbatical. The two brothers are now teamed up with their respective sons, with Kali and Quinton leading Hermann and Richard in a good-natured family fight at the top of the Special Vehicle Championship. Behind the elegant fuel bat, the ever-steady Louis Weichelt and Francis Bushma were leading Class D with the N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser still locked in battle with the Team Ford Ranger TDCI of teenager Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable. Chasing after them were Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer, who lost time at the designated service point, adjusting the rear stabilizers on the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux. Then, more high drama. News was filtering back that cars had rolled on the route. The Orange Works back crew of Jacques Wheeler and Philip Hosselman arrived at a road crossing to report that the Atlas Copco bat of Jan van Staden and James Rousseau and the Century Racing CR3 of Colin Matthews and Alan Smith had been involved in an accident. Uh, unfortunately, we were, we were behind Johan coming through the dip here, and uh, we were sitting just to his right. And unfortunately, the route does bend to the left and dipped through and Johan turned in and as he turned in we collided but luckily everyone's fine and we're okay. Paramedics were quickly on the scene with Johan van Staden treated for concussion at a local hospital before being released. Out on the route it was back to business with the Mpomalanga brothers Johan and Werner Horn running third in Class D in the Malilan Toyota Land Cruiser. They were 11 and a half minutes behind the class leaders and had an anxious moment when the Land Cruiser stalled. But just a turn of the ignition key and luckily they were underway yet again. A couple of locals who were busy gathering wood to keep the home fires burning weren't too interested in what was going on around them. For their part, Francois Conradi and Andrew van der Vestosen were showing extreme caution as they picked their way across a rocky section in an early spec bat that was running at the back of the Class P field. Starting to close in on Conradi and Van der Westhuizen were Class E leaders Deirdre Cutting and Christo Bosman, who were also taking the ultra-cautious approach in the Transcore Toyota Hilux. Overnight, Hutting and Bosman were worried about a leaking differential, but with the home stretch in sight, all looked well with the Toyota Hilux. It's great to get away to a place in the sun to turn the cafe your lay. Take off, take a break where there's no telephones on the stations to make. It's fun deciding where you want to go. Take it fast or maybe take it slow if it's time to just chill. Take a walk through the dawn while the world stands still Oh, go, shake it down Dance through the night on the hot spot in town Happy days It's great to get away It's great to get away Take a break Get into golf with your world of champions Hamilton is known as the gateway to the Waikato region, home to the Lord of the Rings-inspired Hobbiton. 48 kilometers away is Raglan, one of the finest surf beaches around. Hamilton will be the base for five Rugby World Cup teams, including host New Zealand. More than 60 All Blacks have come from the Waikato region. Game on. A 24-hour dedicated rugby channel, only on your world of champions.
into the home stretch on the Sun City 400 and, believe it or not, the drama wasn't over yet. Special vehicle leaders Gary and David White were running just in front of production vehicle leaders Duncan Foss and Rob Howie, who had the Atlas Copco bat of Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett right on their heels. The three cars were line of stone when heartbreak struck for the White brothers, who picked up a puncture that put pain to their dreams of a maiden national championship win. Foss and Howie went steaming past the stranded Rokon bat, but were soon to be overtaken by a fired-up Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett in the Atlas Copco bat, who were now in pole position to become the fourth-class P crew to win the special vehicle category on an ABSA national event. The Atlas Copco bat of Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett was not only first in Class P, but was the overall leader in the special vehicle category. Right behind them were Duncan Force and Rob Howie, who were in control of the production vehicle category and Class SP. A second win this season for the Castrol Toyota crew now looked a mere formality. Championship contenders Hermann and Richard Sulwald did their title hopes no harm by slotting into second place overall and first in Class A in the Sulwald Racing SVR. On the production vehicle front, Hannes Grobler and Hinita Steg had quietly gone about their business in an RFS BMW that was battling clutch and gearbox problems. Behind the BMW, the unfortunate whites were up and running, but dropped down the pecking order when times at which cars left the designated service park were checked and adjusted. Final results saw the Ruhrkon pair placed eighth overall and third in Class A. Behind the whites, Delmas pair, Buna Bortis and Jan Pretorius had also quietly gone about their business and had moved up the special vehicle ladder. Another solid performance that had gone almost unnoticed saw Northwest crew Malcolm Cock and Johan Berger move into third in the production vehicle category in the Cock and Sons Toyota Hilux. A strong second loop also moved Evan Hutchison and Danny Stassen up the special vehicle order, with the Motorwhite Revo placed third in provisional results. They were then hit with a five-minute penalty for deviating from the route, and Bulla Buertas and Johan Pretorius found themselves on the podium for the first time. John Thompson and Clinton McNamara also moved up a notch and a superb drive gave them a top five finish and second in Class P. Hutchison and Stassen's demotion saw the final top five placing go to Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar in the Century Racing CR3 with Archie Rutherford and Mike Lawrenson tightening their hold on the Class P championship with a third in class. After a disappointing Toyota Desert race, the Bowden pair of Thomas Rundle and Jean Moore needed a solid result. Fourth place provided just that and kept them in the production vehicle championship hunt. There was also a workmanlike performance from Kozulu Nintel pair Clint Gibson and Gary Campbell, who in the final results were classified just five seconds ahead of David and Gary White, with Limpopo crew Naim Mosaji and Rowan Bodhanya slotting in ahead of the demoted Evan Hutchison and Dani Stassen. Further back, Special Vehicle Championship leaders Cully and Quinton Sulwald salvaged valuable championship points after falling into a ditch. A late charge took them past the Regent Racing Navarra of Terence Marsh and George Smallberger and 11th overall in the Special Vehicle category. Behind them, Louis Weichelt and Francis Bourgeois were putting the finishing touches to their second Class D win of the year. The N1 4x4 Toyota Land Cruiser ran like clockwork all weekend, with the pair finishing 22 seconds ahead of the Team Ford Ranger of Lance Woolridge and Ward Huxtable. The two cars had fought a running battle throughout the race, with Woolridge and Huxtable running around a minute ahead of Class D champions Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer in a 4x4 Mega World Toyota, missing a few body panels. Behind the Toyota, the husband and wife pair of Marius and Yolinda Ferri were also busy salvaging valuable Class P points in the PHB bat. One of the features of the Sun City 400 was the big spectator turnout with fans flocking to designated spectator points throughout the route. They were treated to some terrific racing, with the likes of Johan and Wagner Horn pushing hard in the Malolan Toyota Land Cruiser to secure third in Class D. A steady performance gave Diedrich Hunting and Christo Bosman their second Class E win of the season in their Transcore Toyota Hilux, with Kutsia and Sandra Labaskachny scoring the first win of the season for them in the race Sonic Zarco in Class B. 
Free State crew Gerald LaRue and Willem Pretorius were second in Class E in the Rubicon Ford Ranger, and there was a demonstration of off-road racing camaraderie with Class D championship leaders Jack and Sarl Oersthuizen giving rookie teenagers Jason Fenter and Vincent van Allerman a toe after the 4x4 megawall Toyota Hilux ran into problems. The Wersthazens preserved their 100% record this season, while Fenter and Van Allerman were eventually classified third in Class E after crossing the finish line under their own steam. The Wersthazens and the Fenter Van Allerman Toyota were a temporary holdup for the Machanete brothers, who were second in Class B, and the McLaughlin brothers, who nipped ahead of the Zarka on the final run into the finish. Class E championship leaders Piet Kotze and Solomon Victor salvaged points in third place in Class E, with Dirk Pitter and Kurs Klaassens losing valuable time when they overstayed their welcome at the designated service point. Soldiering along at the tail end of the field was Wolf Peter Fungfai in the single-seater WPP, with the veteran the last of the classified finishers and third in Class B. At the ceremonial finish at the Sun City Complex, delighted Atlas Copco supporters were on hand to welcome Richard Fuller and Jeff Minnett, who became only the fourth Class P crew in off-road history to win the special vehicle category on an ABSA national event. To add to the achievement, Fuller, a former kart racer, was having only his fifth outing in his short off-road racing career. Well, unexpected, we had a win. It was an awesome result, yeah. Now we are coming in uh, towards the ending. We honestly didn't know we were, in, we were in first. We were actually, we were obviously first in class at the time. And to be told that you first overall was just, uh, it bowled us over. It was awesome, absolutely awesome. The final margin of victory was just over three minutes with two other Class P crews joining Fuller and Minute in the top 10. In the production vehicle category, the factory team Castrol Toyota pair of Duncan Force and Rob Howie put the finishing touches to a second victory of the season that lifted them from seventh to first in the overall championship. Yeah, we had a great day. You know, we, we came here on the back foot. Uh, we were behind in the championship. The pressure was on to, to give a good result to the whole of the Toyota people. And uh, we managed to achieve it, so we're really happy. There was a final cushion of over four and a half minutes for Foss and Howie with a maiden podium finish for Malcolm Koch and Johan Berger. The ABSA Team of the Event Award and a cheque for 5,000 Rand to the Avril Elizabeth home went to the South African National Off-Road Racing Association technical team headed up by Dick Sorensen. Sonia Williams of ABSA Rustenburg made the presentation. The next event on the ABSA Off-Road Championship calendar is the 4x4 Mega World 400 at Carnival City on the East Rand on September the 9th and 10th. Catch all the action on this great event right here on Supersport, your world of champions.